It was a dark and stormy night. Not really, but that's an opening that keeps you reading. The days are finally gloomy where I live, and there's chill in the air, which is enough for my mind to dress in cobwebs and grave spookiness. Sweet and cozy spookiness, because I'm a scaredy cat. I say trick or treating, Halloween candy, friendly ghosts, jack-o'-lanterns, witches and wizards and haunted castles and houses. Well, hello there. Welcome to my simple grave. I know I'm not very spooky, sorry. <laughs> But I wanted to make this video today a little bit more fun so that I could try some Halloween candy and also I just had this idea for this video where I would eat spooky Halloween candy and listen to spooky music and come up with a spooky story idea. Maybe even write it in this vlog, but we'll see, I don't know if I'll have time. But I just wanted to like really get in the spooky Halloween mood and I've been wanting to write something spooky for a while now so I thought this was just the perfect opportunity. I even did some spooky makeup but I'm gonna have to take it off soon because uh, I'm gonna take a break to go meet with family and <laughs> I'm not gonna go there like this But yeah, I just wanted to do this for the introduction of this video and let's get started I still don't know exactly what I'm going to include in this video But maybe also some spooky reading or spooky baking. I don't know I just want to feel spooky today and take things lightly have fun have fun writing most of all and uh, yeah, see where this takes me. Starting the day with hot chocolate is like... <laughs> so get yourself a spooky drink, some spooky snacks, and let's get started. It's gonna be spooky, it's gonna be good. Cheers to Halloween! Cheers to spookiness! There's a process I usually go through when I'm searching for story ideas. The first step is, of course, to search for inspiration. And my main sources are Pinterest, Tumblr, writing prompts and notes, both ones I've collected throughout the years, and new ones I search for and take in the moment. The notes I take from my real-life experiences, and even dreams, often provide a level of depth to the ideas that would otherwise be harder to develop. For example, for this project, a memory that immediately came to mind was that, as a child, I often saw things as much scarier than they actually were. I knew there were no monsters under the bed, but I still imagined them, I still brought them to life. That fear was as much a ritual as fighting it every night was. The memory of this experience will be useful for the story. In this process, I also reach out to all different types of imagination and mix and match what I picture in my mind until something feels right. When it does, I write it down and I keep doing this until I feel like I have enough ideas to move on to the next step. Um, dois, um, dois, três. 
Okay, so right now I have a decision to make, which is what is this story going to be about? And when I say what, I mean which spooky creature, which character this is going to be about. And right now I'm waving between a few, so I would kind of like it to be about a vampire or maybe even about a ghost. Right now there is a short story contest going on and it's supposed to be about ghosts so I might enter that but I'm not sure, I don't, I don't know if I have time to write the whole thing and write something I'm proud of. Right now I don't really want that kind of pressure but I would still like to write something about ghosts. And then I kind of also want to write about a pumpkin patch I don't know, I'm just in the mood for the scarecrow vibe and uh, actually the first ever writing contest I won was about a scarecrow so it would kind of be nice to go back to that and yeah, those are the three elements, creatures I know a scarecrow is not like a fantasy creature but if you give it life, then it is. So yeah, those are the three creatures I'm trying to choose from. Let me know which one of those three you would prefer to write about or you would prefer me to write about. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna choose, but write it down below in the comments and let's see if I choose that. If not, then maybe I'll write about that at another time. Yeah, let's make that choice first. A quick scroll through Pinterest, or maybe not so quick to be honest, made me lean towards cats as the main element instead. A black cat. A scaredy cat. A scaredy black cat on Halloween night. From there, the story idea came to me easily, and the more ideas I came up with for the story, the more excited I got to write it. While at first the black cat was going to be the main character, I ended up switching to a human protagonist. The two of them share a strange connection though, they're almost like one. I wondered for a while who would be the best protagonist for the story I want to tell. Some writers believe that the plot should come first and characters later. Others believe this approach makes characters less real and believable. I'm not a part of either extreme. I think plot and character can perfectly well be developed side by side because the way one affects the other is very much the way external forces affect people in real life. But each person still has their own unique ways of reacting to said forces. So that's the way I develop stories. My characters are as much a product of the plot as the plot is a product of their personal qualities. Okay, so let me share with you a few notes I took inspired by my Pinterest search. 
The scaredy black cat is so scared that he has to hide inside the jack-o'-lantern. Maybe he's such a scaredy cat that even his name reflects that. Something like Spook or Fang. Fellow writers, help me out choose a name for the cat. What would you call a scaredy black cat? Let me know in the comments, I'd love some ideas. The cat and his human have to cross their small town on Halloween night. Everything is different and spooky around this night. Neighbors whom they thought were perfectly harmless turn out to be scary mythical beings. Or is it just their costumes? They come across a witch, a vampire, maybe even a scarecrow. Each little adventure brings them closer to their goal. Or does it? My story ideas usually start with tiny details like these ones, little moments that spark something in me, no matter how simple or silly they are. At this point, there was no question that this was a middle grade story, because every spooky idea I got excited about was cozy and funny, and in my mind, the whole thing played out in animation format. Kind of like Coraline, but perhaps not as scary. I found a name for the main character, which might still change, but the cat is still unnamed. I'm calling him Spook for now, but I'm not sure that's it. I'm thinking it might be too much on the nose. I know exactly why both of them have to cross their small town on this particular night, but I'm not sure what happens after they get there. If they arrive by the main point, I have two options. Either their goal is achieved and they realize what they want is not actually what they need, or even though they went through so much, they still can't achieve their goal. Maybe each of them goes through a different experience in the midpoint to make it more interesting. This is just a sneak peek into my thought process. I had so much fun coming up with the details for this story, but the more I developed the plot, the more I struggled to keep it... Well, short. Okay, so it's the next day. I wasn't gonna be filming today, but I wanted to update you on a decision I made. So, because I am me, I kept finding ways to turn this short story into a novel and some of these ways really piqued my interest and now I really think this could be like a really good novel idea instead of a short story and the more I think about it the more excited I get about it I'm thinking it might be a bit spookier than what I was initially intending on but I just feel like this could be like such a cute, funny and spooky adventure. I'm honestly super excited, maybe even too excited because writing a novel is not the same as writing a short story, of course. So I don't even know what I'm embarking on because I don't have time to write a novel right now. I have to story ideas that I'm already working on. My main idea, which is Project Snow, and then my NaNoWriMo idea, which is Project Chimney. But I'm thinking maybe I could still change my mind. Am I changing my mind?
So yesterday I was at the supermarket and saw this donut and I immediately thought, oh my god, the scaredy cat makes friends with a bat. Of course he does. Doesn't that sound like so much fun? So I had to get it to show you. Okay, welcome to another clip with a not so spooky makeup and I put this on for a special announcement so I have made the decision to turn this project into my NaNoWriMo project so what I'm thinking is in December I can still write Project Chimney and then it will actually be Christmas month and for now I'm still going to relish in the spooky vibes in the Halloween mood and uh, at the same time because I don't have an outline for this project I'm going to take it lightly, just try to have fun, not take it too seriously and I'm going to try and focus more on Project Snow you know, like more and more throughout the month so that later in the year I can make actual progress on that project as well so yeah, I'm really excited about this decision. If it's a bad idea, I don't want to know. I'm just gonna go for it and you're coming along. So let's do it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and set up a Notion page for this novel idea. I don't have a pitch yet, but for now I'm describing it as the story of a small boy and a scaredy cat who have to cross their small town on Halloween night. I think this is your first glimpse into my updated Notion template. Even though it looks different from the one I shared with you before, the principles are all the same. Still, I'll be giving you a tour of this new version soon. Fun fact for those of you who haven't watched my last video, this is actually my first time ever celebrating Halloween, so it's very meaningful to me that I'm spending this energy on writing a story inspired by all of the things that excite me about this holiday. Brainstorming this story has brought me to a corner of my mind which I'm very curious to explore. So while I write it, I want to try and dive into this world 100%. I want to forget that I'm writing. I want to forget that I'm me. I want to get so in the zone that I don't worry about anything except how to get to the other side of my small town on the scariest night of the year. And speaking of the scariest night of the year, let me know how you celebrate Halloween, I'd like to know. Did you dress up this year? I'm still not sure what my main character will be dressing as, but I want it to be something unique that fits his personality, or at least his situation. I really like that there are so many fun details to think about when writing this story. Alright, we'll end this video and prep session here because I literally don't have time for any more preparation. I'll be sharing more about this story in future videos for those of you who are interested. In the meantime, happy Halloween and I'll be seeing you during NaNoWriMo. Bye!